Hi, Roshan. Welcome to the Quint. Hi, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is Matthew calling Matthew. <laughs> this uh, Kuruti trailer is not out as yet as we speak, but uh, I got a preview to the trailer just a few minutes back, and uh, let me tell you, it has me hooked. You know, it's it's heady. It's it's in a way mind blowing, and uh, you know, it gives you just enough so that you're intrigued to watch the film. Uh, there are a lot of doors opening and closing uh, in the trailer, but the first door opens to Roshan Matthew. <laughs> you want to tell us about how you became a part of the team of Kuruthi? So, uh, regular lockdown morning, uh, Prithvi uh, sent a long text saying this is project that uh, has been uh, kept uh, has kept him excited for a while, and he has decided to do it immediately. So, if your dates work out, can we talk about it? So, I said let's talk about it first, and we'll <laughs> we'll work everything else out later. I I was waiting to uh, work with him again on a project after Coup Day. uh so i went uh, met him uh this was at a time when the first long lockdown had just about uh, gotten done and films uh, shoots in malayalam were resuming uh so i heard the story absolutely loved it and prithvi told that this is the cast and crew that he has in mind i was extremely intimidated um then uh, i also knew that ibrahim is not Uh, definitely not like an easy character that i could say yes to in a minute so i asked him for a day to think about it and i said i will i will come back to you with a decision and prithvi was quite surprised uh, <laughs> why i had to think about it and uh, yeah I, i i i told him that i like i'm okay with it scaring me i just don't want it to scare me to a point where i can't do it at all you know so i went back uh, slept on it and then next day i said uh, yeah i'll take this up i want to do it Okay, you want to reveal a bit about why you were scared scared to take it up? Was it was it really that challenging? Uh, yeah. See, for me, Ibrahim, when I when I read it, he reads as someone. For me personally, like his him his past, uh, what he is dealing with in life currently when the movie is happening, everything was so distant to me, and this was happening. This was going to almost happen immediately. So I, I for one, I like I wanted to just make sure that I could I could get there, that I could understand him well enough or get where get where he is where when the movie happens because it. the the events in the movie sort of question almost everything that he stands for his his identity his faith all of it so until you have a good understanding of where he stands it becomes very difficult right to like question where you are question what you have believed you need to first have that in place to then be able to question it and then be confused okay. so that was one reason and the other reason was purely that apart from prithvi all the other actors in this cast are uh, actors i've never worked with before um actually never even spoken to uh, uh with like maybe one exception and they're all people who i've uh, been really excited by when i've seen them in films i wanted to work with them uh you mean like purely with the exception of sagar who's literally doing his first film uh even naslin the other actor who is only one film old in this i've seen that one film that he did and he was brilliant in it so they're all actors who've done great work as far as i'm concerned and i didn't want to be the one who lets the group down you know from what i could make out of the trailer it's the story is about the hunter and the hunted you know the there's somebody who's after you you're the mm-hmm. basically the hunted and it also seems to be about man's baser instincts towards you know vengeance and violence mm-hmm. without giving away much what can you tell us about the film well you've got that spot on uh, it's uh, you know apart from that the only thing i would add is that it it is sometimes one particular incident or one you know unexpected event that brings out everything that we have tucked away uh, you know somewhere not not revealed to or like an entire side to ourselves or a thought that we have had for so long that has never come out even with our closest people with with family or the people that we love um so i i think the grays of every character are brought out um, quite smartly in 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 the series of events that happens and it it you know it happens organically or so i thought and believe when i did the film you watching you tell me what you thought uh so that uh, added to whatever you just said is uh, i think a great description of what the what the film is going to be 
So, um, Roshan, you shot for CU soon during the pandemic and you also shot for Kuruti during the pandemic. I want to know what was your experience like shooting with all the uh, COVID protocols in place. I was speaking to Priyan sir a few weeks back and, you know, he had shot for Hangama too. And he was telling me how he likes to tell the or explain to his actors the kind of expressions that they should have while they are shooting a particular scene. And he had to, you know, repeatedly pull down his mask and tell them exactly what he wants. But he said... All over the day or days or the period of time sort of extended. If earlier a shoot was for 10 days because of COVID, it became 12 or 13 days. What was your experience like shooting during the pandemic? I think uh, we somehow, you know, tend to find a new normal, whatever situation that, that we are thrown in, because at the end of the day, we want to make the work happen, right? So that's sort of what happened with CU Soon and what happened with Guruji as well. It was entirely different because uh, in, in CU Soon, it was very easy to, you know, keep the crew to uh, as low a number as say like uh, 12, 14 or maximum 19 people. And uh, Guruji was like a full fledged film there was no chance we could do that but the script did allow us to go to a slightly isolated uh, location uh, as much as possible separate ourselves from any sort of exposure put that distance between us and the rest of the world in a way so that we we stay uh, protected within each other and even in that space obviously we go with all the uh, you know we we do the masks and we do our uh, sanitization and you know we keep distance as much as possible but somehow with with kurdi because we had this big advantage of it uh, happening in these remote locations uh, the whole story pretty much you you know you'd only see these uh, eight characters and maybe like a few other people in a few scenes otherwise it it sticks to them um, so it it gave us that opportunity to sort of somehow uh, get to some sense of normalcy also. So Kuridi, for me, after a while, it stopped feeling like a film shot during the pandemic. I was, and I'm, I'm more than happy to get on set and, you know, forget that COVID is around us. So. <laughs> uh, you know, Roshan, I was reading about you and uh, you've done your BSc from Madras Christian College. Yes. And from BSc to getting into theatre and acting is like a long, uh, big jump. Um, yeah. Did you come from a, uh, you know, Malu family where, you know, your parents were like, Rani, engineer or doctor, Arana, that's why you went into BSc. And then <laughs> they, after getting a taste of what acting is like and being on stage and uh, being on film or anything is like, you said, you know, this is what I want to do and like gave them a big jolt. <laughs> In fact, I actually went to an engineering college first. So. I <laughs> I uh, went and joined uh, electronics and communication engineering in a in a place called Cochin uh, University of Science and Technology. Okay. Um, so I finished one year of that. Uh, then I realized whatever I do from here on, I will somehow manage to get this degree. But I am not going to be happy working a job that this gives me I, I knew I had that clarity so the big problem is actually so we all uh, we all end up we all acknowledge the fact that uh, the, uh, the the fact that these are the professions which are uh, you know spoken about the most or given to you as options at a point where you're only beginning to think that does influence you heavily and you feel like these are the only ways to go and that is definitely part of the problem but another part of the problem is that you just don't have clarity because you don't have any other influences. So it was after doing one year of engineering that I found the clarity that I'm not going to be happy if I continue doing this. So I decided to quit that. And I just wanted to go to Madras Christian College. I didn't, I didn't care what course I did very honestly. So I knew that my, my, my marks in physics and my marks in English could get me into MCC possibly. And then again, because we all tend to lean a little more towards the, the sciences for I don't know why. I really wish I'd done English, but I also genuinely enjoyed physics, you know, in 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 uh, in school and even in that one year in uh, engineering college. So I thought, okay, yeah, this makes sense. So I'll go to MC. I want to go to MCC purely because my grandfather went there, and I heard a lot of stories about the college. Uh, so I went to MCC, uh, and I also knew that it was a very culturally active uh, campus. 
uh, went to MCC very quickly realized that physics is not what I thought it was and I can't do this <laughs> but hey there's all this stuff happening on the side that's pretty cool and and uh, for the first time in life I, I you know I, I, I my, my classes began at 8 30 in the morning and by some 1 40 or 2 o'clock I'm done and I have the rest of my day to do whatever I want and and you know and like there are all these like things happening in campus all of these courses people from all over the country so my world was suddenly so much much bigger there was so much to you know get a taste of and pretty much the first thing that i went for was theater so i still think that i was just so overwhelmed that i it's like you you walk into an ice cream parlor as a kid and there's so many flavors you've never seen before and you take the first one and you love it and you're like this is all i want to have for the rest of my life so that's that's sort of what happened with uh, with theater for me i like I, I started doing theater in college outside of college and i and i immediately thought this is this is making me very happy this is all i want this is all I want to do for the rest of my life. I did not once think about how I'll make a living doing it. And I'm glad I didn't because then I probably wouldn't have gone for it. Now, you know, uh, Muton was a big uh, game changer for you. Uh, Geetu Mohan Das's film, it premiered at um, Toronto and then it got a lot of critical uh, appreciation. Do you think that uh, looking back, Muton was a turning point for you in some ways? Definitely, definitely, and I'm I'm not looking. At, I'm not saying that from the perspective of you know where the film uh, it took me in in terms of film festivals or the the critical acclaim that the film got. For me, it was just the experience of doing that film and working with Geetu and a crew that you know had Rajiv sir and a cast that had Nibin and and Dilish both in. And uh, so, like that that experience for me was was something else. I didn't I didn't know that uh, uh, that amount of satisfaction could come out of uh, doing you know a character in a film until then i hadn't felt it and uh, until muton very honestly i've i've gone and i've watched myself either in like the dubbing studio or when the film comes out and i've always come out disappointed uh, with what i've done because i i feel like itna sab socha tha ka hai where, where did you like where did all of that go? And uh, to the point where, uh, and, and that, that keeps, you know, that, that scale keeps uh, tilting. Sometimes you are very disappointed, but sometimes there are also some things that you got, right? So it, it balances itself out. And Muton came at a time when I feel if, if that hadn't happened, I, I wouldn't have had the energy to keep going because I, I was at a point where I was beginning to think that maybe you can't do all of what you think you can. And it's definitely not like I, I got everything right with Moton, but it was the most satisfied I had been at that point with respect to everything I had done so far. So I, I, it gave me a lot of hope, very simply put. Okay. Your, your first Hindi film was with Anurag Kashyap uh, Chok, um, which many uh, actors would consider an enviable achievement. Um, how did you get choked? Did Anurag see you in Mudan and approach you or did you go to Anurag audition for it? Uh, no, uh, so he was he was part of Muton. He was, uh, you know, he 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 wrote the dialogues for Muton. He was also an executive producer for Muton. Uh, so uh, he was a co-producer, actually. I'm sorry, but yeah. So he he wasn't there when we were filming the portion in Lakshadweep with uh, with me and Nivin, uh, the flashback portion that I am in. Uh, so he only saw that bit on the editing table when he was sitting on the edit, and uh, Geetu was there with him one day and and like uh, he he liked what he saw of me and then Geetu texted me and I'm sitting at home I was shooting for a Malayalam film at that point but I think on that day it was only starting later or uh, not shooting and Geetu sent me a text saying Anurag just watched you and uh, he really liked you in it and I was very happy and then she said he's going to call you and I was excited and then he called me almost immediately and I and I jumped off my bed and you know, like I, I, I got really hyper I couldn't sit and talk to him I had to pace up and down you know and and, and my room um, and uh, I, was, I was going breathless and all talking to him I realized very few times that has happened in my life and in that one conversation he said things like uh, this is a breakthrough performance uh, who are you how did I not know you and I said why would you know me I know you but like what do you mean how do I not know you, <laughs> you know? Uh, and then he said uh, okay I'm sending you a script um, so you read it and you tell me if you're interested we'll do this 
and i thought he was kidding you know and like i, I at that point i've had just about enough experiences in life to know that uh, don't get your hopes up about these things it's great that he called you and he liked your work but you know the script will come maybe and he immediately sent the email and i read it in the next couple of days i wrote to him saying i really like it i like yeah i i don't know can i do it i would love to do it and he said okay cool yeah let's shoot this at this particular um, you know time next year um and we were i think in october or november and he said let's shoot june july or something and almost just about then uh, i think mid april i traveled to bombay i december i'd come and i'd met him and everything just happened according to what he had initially said in that one phone call and then you know emails or like phone calls in the coming week so it it really happened at such breakneck speed that i didn't even have the time to fully grasp all of it and it it did feel like a dream a lot of it it was it was lovely okay also working with anurag must have been good because of his theater background and your theater background he's a director who gives sort of a long rope to his actors you know there's space yeah. for improvisation yeah and also you know he takes a long time to call cut you know he just yeah. let the actor go on so how was that experience like it was it was lovely for me because again uh, like, like i mentioned with muton the there was there was something that i got from chok that i i really needed and i didn't know that i needed which is until then i used to go into uh, go for a, a day of shoot thinking my primary job is to get the scene done so that we can move on to the next thing and uh, anurag sir sort of uh, showed me that that's not your primary job that is our job your job is to just explore so don't build all these fences around you don't restrict yourself don't do a different kind of thing for film and then you know sit back and think that ha huh, matlab i could have explored more but that if it was a play and if i had four months to rehearse thing no do that here do that now who's telling you that you can't you know uh, so that sort of like he basically taught me to not take uh the the pressure of which happens to especially to someone uh, who's come in from having only done theater and like i i i i was it's not like i came into a very comfortable setting where we had all the time in the world to get my scenes done I was playing smaller parts and the scenes had to be done on deadlines initially when i started doing films and all that so he showed me that all of that is not for you to worry about uh you explore you do whatever you want to do and Uh, yeah like don't don't restrict yourself so i i really and just so exactly what you said like he wouldn't call cut or you know we're going for a, a retake but he comes and tell, and it's a close shot but he comes and tells you don't do what you did in the last take wo mil gaya mujhe kuch aur kar lena uh all that had never happened to me because like yeah i'm thinking but how will that match uh, you know in edit or how will uh, that fit into the script then through the film he taught me that none of that is for me to think about so that was great now coming back to kurdi uh, it's a onam release uh, you know i want to ask you what are your earliest memories of onam or what how do you spend your onam usually is it with family having sadhya tell us about it yeah so uh, onam uh, when i was in school i think those are the nicest memories that i've had because from college onwards i was hardly ever home it's a sort of only a holiday that happens in kerala right so when like chennai bombay and all you never really end up getting home for onam uh, when we were in school it was a lot of fun because everyone has uh, like 10 days off so all of you all of your cousins are free all of your neighbors are free so cricket tournaments are happening and you know the regular you know like yummy food is uh, <laughs> going to happen on that one day that's super exciting um the the art of the pookalam that you do is also that, that like very honestly that wasn't a big part of like my onam for me uh, the most exciting thing was after the sadhya at around 3:30 4 o'clock every malayalam channel has a big new film playing these like television premieres of films that and like we were a family that did regularly go to the theater but it's not like we watched every film so every onam i can remember you know one big mohanlal film or one big mammootty film or like you know like a, a like incredibly funny dilip film and you have to fight for it because there's one tv and like seven kids and some six elders in one house or maybe even more and you really have to win 
your argument if you want to watch the film and if you're not good enough in your debate then you'll only end up getting to watch bits of it when there's a commercial break happening on the other channel <laughs> because you flip chat so it it for me like mostly revolved around the the films that came on tv and i and i still remember some of those big fights i've had and like i've cried and all because the decision didn't come in my favor <laughs> Okay, uh, Roshan, my last question, and this is the biggest, most important question. Uh, suppose I come to Kerala, which is the best biryani place to go to? Uh, you're a Kerala guy, you've been around Kochi and Changna Sheri and all other places. Tell me. Oh, Lord, this is so tricky. <laughs> because whatever I say, there's going to be so many, this is sort of like picking that movie for all of them. Okay, top three, which is your experience. Okay, no. Uh, so let's do this. <laughs> I know people who will make you a killer biryani that you will not be able to find in any restaurant. Uh, and I and these are all like also film people. So you will also guarantee that you will have a great conversation along with it. So get in touch with me. <laughs> put you in touch with those people. But if not that, I've uh, recently in Kochi uh, really enjoyed. Uh, um, Kai's biryani, I've really enjoyed. There's a Rahmania that does a great mutton biryani, and uh, uh, all of that's there. But uh, if you're coming and you really want to have good biryani, go to Calicut, and I will put you in touch with someone in Calicut who will take you to all the right places. Yeah, my favorite is Rahmat Hotel, but there might be others also. Okay. Yeah. okay, okay. I remember going to Kai's some years back, and they had a photo of Mamuti eating there. <laughs> like yeah, Mamuti yeah. had his biryani. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thanks, Roshan. It was great talking to you and uh, you. all the best for Kuruti. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really hope you like the film. <laughs>